This video is brought to you by Film Convert. For high-end film color and grain, check out the link in the video description. So I'm on my way to visit one of the editors of the documentary, The Square. It's an Oscar-nominated film about the Egyptian revolution at Tahir Square in the ongoing crisis. I wanted to find out what it takes to edit a documentary that leaves a mark. So I was excited to meet Mohammed El Manasli and look over his shoulder. The Square, which is available on Netflix, has won three Emmys, one of them for editing. We want to dedicate this award for our assistant editor. She's Egyptian, her name is Sana, and she's now in jail because she stood up for freedom. After I, I go with you through how things are organized and how okay. I um, like my process and how it leads to something like this, and how it's organized and how I, I watch the mark. And... Do you want to get through this? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Basically, we came down to the streets to ask for our rights, you know. <laughs> After 30 years of uh, Mubarak, <laughs> his regime was very oppressive. <laughs> What was different about it is that the, it was the youth who came out to the street. How did you get involved? When did you hear about it? So I actually met Jen during the revolution. It was crazy times. Everyone was protesting. Everyone was in the square. She was very generous and she uh, took me on board. Since then, we started a journey for like three and a half years. And, and it ended up with this amazing uh, beast of a film. So the first thing we do is we get all the footage, we make sure we rename everything to a, a naming convention that works for us. We transcode, we import, sync and group, and then we organize everything by days. And then I go to each day and I start watching. And I start watching, I start marking tediously to the point that sometimes I feel like I'm a little bit transcribing. And the good thing about the markers is you can see everything, you know, if you mark right. Yeah. But now you can read and know what is he talking about. I'm growing up in a rough neighborhood because it's like, you know, majority of us, our mother's on like section eight. It really helps in the long run. It helps me know what's in the footage. And after watching, I start realizing big ideas. Who are the best characters do we have? Who are the ones who are most, most charismatic? The majority of us on a day-to-day -day basis we are told that you are black. What are you working on right now? So I'm actually working on a documentary called The Forgotonia. It means the forgotten place. Yeah. And it's about this group of amazing women in Chicago who created an organization that provide early childhood education for young black kids. We find like main themes like about being black, them talking about their family, discussing how dangerous the city is about them going to college and taking all these sound bites and try to put them in one place, putting it in, as I call them, like different buckets. So these are the different sound bites about that theme. Yeah. So it's called about, about being black. So I have a bin for it and each character, there's a timeline for them. Oh, okay. For what they said. So that's like a select reel? Exactly. And you see what works and what doesn't work. Sometimes they work together, sometimes they doesn't. Sometimes they say the same thing over and over again. So it helps you select basically what is the best thing. Not only with interviews, also with footage. So you have like the best shots of the long shots of Chicago, or these are the best shot that shows the dirty side or the good side or whatever, you know? So just being able to divide all this footage and putting it into these different buckets to be able to make a decision. A good app that I use that helps a lot with uh, note-taking and structuring characters is Trello. What is Trello? Trello is an app that helps you organize documents or thoughts. Instead of like using the board to put note cards on it, Yeah. but it's nicer because you can add links, you can change colors, you know, and everyone can see it. You don't have to be in the same room to see it. 
since we're working remotely, it's good that the director can see it and my assistant can see it. And if I do any changes, and sometimes it's like, oh, you put this idea before this idea. Why don't we do this instead of that, you know? So I can do like for each character, I can do an arc for it mm -hmm. with like the main themes of him or like the big ideas, you know, and I try to integrate it in his arc and see where it fits. You can see like arcs for each different characters and you have the arc for the full film and you try to integrate all these arcs together. Before we move on to the next section where Misho shows us how he arrives at the three-act structure, I want to take a brief moment and thank Film Convert for their support. This video was graded with this amazing piece of software. Film Convert enables you to add film color and grain to your video in a few simple clicks. It works with the top editing and effects softwares, including Premiere, Final Cut Pro 10, Resolve, Avid, After Effects and Motion. Now you can download the free trial by clicking the link in the video description. And if you would like to see how I use it to create the right look for this episode, there's an additional bonus video linked here as well. Now back to Misho. And then after watching everything and marking and realizing all these main themes and big ideas, I start think about it in a three-act structure. So we have two things. We have the chronology of events and we have the main, the main big ideas. And it's how to integrate both where your character is going from point A to point B and at the same time they're main ideas that you want to discuss and how you fit this into a three-act structure. So sit with the director and start putting the big ideas in a three-act structure, right? Okay. And then you divide the three-act structure into scenes and create a bin or a timeline for each scene and then put all the footage that you think can work in this scene. This is what you call like the heavy lifting. <laughs> Sometimes you have sound bites in, in, in different scenes, you know? You, can, you can't make a decision now. Just leave them there. You think it works here? Put it here. Think it works there? Put it there. And then later you, you learn. Try to throw things on, on the timeline. The most important thing is to keep, keep moving forward. Just throw it there, don't overthink it. The process of you putting one shot next to the other and watch it gives you ideas. It will speak to you. So build as much as you can, as fast as you can, and watch. You'll trim here, you'll trim there, and then you'll have more ideas. You start having this bird's eye view of a look of the film. <laughs> You can see like the tone of each scene, you can see the pace of it, and while you're structuring as much as you can, you need things to have variations, you need to mix between the happy and sad, you know, the fast and slow, the reflective and dumb, or whatever, you know, to be able to grab people's attention. feel like is exciting about documentaries is that you invent your own and each sometimes sometimes you have the whole story sometimes you don't sometimes you come on board early on sometimes you come on board halfway through sometimes the characters are not evolved yet you know they didn't reach conclusions and this was one of the things that were tricky with the square where you were in the events and we're editing in an office which was five minute walk from the square and events are happening right now and it was so hard to have a perspective to what's happening and to jump onto conclusions. But the more we waited and the more events evolve, then you start seeing an arc to everything and you start to have a perspective for it. And one of the tricky things in the square is that let's show what the perspective of the characters and, and try as much as we can not to impose our perspective onto things. <laughs> طلع عليهم عملاء وخونة 
والناس العملاء والخونه بتقال عليهم ابطال I like how you don't see them talk on camera. It's yeah, all in their head. Yeah. So I only go to the interviews when when there's certain emotion or when when early on where you're establishing the character. As much as I can, I don't show the interview. I just go for a specific purpose. But other than that, I'd I'd like to play the verite scenes and let the voice takes you. <laughs> it has to do with the the style of documentaries that I like to do, where it's based. more on verity and the interviews are or the sound bites are just there to give you some context we did all of this in order just to remove him and put someone exactly like him in his place i think this was a very objective path to take in um, in, in cutting this film misha really wanted to go through organization because it is vital and not that well covered And I think if you follow his steps, you put yourself on a path of becoming a successful documentary editor. So you were talking about the importance of audio. But we also examined a different project and how audio can make us feel the story. So you're muting the tracks that we're not playing? I'm soloing the tracks that are playing. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> not just music and dialogue, but a complete sound design concept. This will be available as bonus content on Patreon, as well as a full Q&A he did with Patreon members. Kenneth is asking for your top 10 tips you would give to someone that is making their first documentary. Try to talk with the director about the film first. When and how do you find the story? Interesting. I think this is a good one. How do you sculpt dramatic moments without appearing biased or one-sided? Is there an advice that you could give when you want to be an assistant editor in the documentary field? Yeah, I, I love I love assistants. Assistants like control my life. Plus, the free Watch Me Edit session where I use Film Convert to grade this episode. So tons of extra content not to be missed. Furthermore, there's a book I'd like to recommend. Jacob Breaker's Documentary Editing, Principles and Practice. From the setup to selecting, scene finding, refining, to the end product. Jacob and I were classmates at the American Film Institute. He edited a ton of documentaries, including the Sundance Special Jury Prize winner, The Bad Kids, and now teaches filmmaking and documentary editing at the University of Arizona. He's a living, breathing, go-to editor. I want to thank Misho for spending time with me, Rebel House Studios for allowing us to take a look at uncut footage of Forgotonia, and I want to thank you for watching. Is this a weapon? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.